What's up guys? Uh, welcome back to LIFM. We're going to be doing a game of EDH here in MTGO. And I'm going to be playing my Rafik deck and I'm facing... Looks like I am facing uh, Mar Mayel or whatever she's called. I'm going to keep this hand and uh, I'm also going to be transitioning to this MTGO program instead of the old one. I prefer the old one better myself but uh, it looks like this is the direction we're going to be going in anyway, so I'm going to be doing a few games to test it out. So bear with me as I try to figure out the interface. So we didn't have any green lands, but I chose to keep this hand anyways. For the fact that I already had three lands in hand and I had a remand, I have Wood Elf, so if I do draw into a forest, I can uh, get another forest. So that, that was my reason for that. I'm probably going to uh, remand something simple just to get my land. Um, this actually works out pretty good. I'll fetch here. I guess grab a breeding pool. I'll pay the two life. Just so we can get wood elf wood elves out this turn. And then go into a temple garden. For that we won't pay two life and uh just pass it back to him. Okay, so that's a thing. It's not a thing that we're worried about right now. So we'll play a land. We're not going to waste any time with this. We know we're going to be exiling it. We'll swing for one here. And I think that's our turn because we want to keep mana up to remand. I'd like to play the Behemoth Sledge, but I want to be able to remand if I need to. Okay, so Stone Hero Giant. Sure, it's a thing. We'll put it back into his hand. I just want basically right now I want to draw a card. And I clicked that wrong. There we go. Completely misclicked. And missed my um chance to counter it. Like I said, still getting used to this interface. Yeah, that's our turn. It's actually pretty big because um, now his uh, giant is active, which is very unfortunate for us. Okay, let's see if we can't um, draw into something from this. Not bad, not bad. Here 
here we go GTA possibly okay that's a thing so we're gonna lose half a life here which is just absolutely brutal Uh, back to our turn. Let's start off with plunder. Yeah, I like this. Actually, don't mind this at all. So we're gonna go that that, so we can draw this. No, we don't want to shuffle. And um, two, four, yeah, that seems right. One, one, two, three. Basically, the way I did it, <clears throat> I'm gonna have to just play into the royal without the kicker because I messed it up. But just to prevent him from uh, doing the same thing this turn. I mean, I know what my next card is. If he plays uh, the giant back this turn, that's pretty much his turn. Interesting. Very interesting. So we're going to lead with Voice of All, and I'm going to go with Red here. I think I should also put this on there. and then pass the turn. Okay, so let's see what he has for us here. <coughs> I'm actually hoping that he just tries to recast the the giant. That'll use up most of his mana and then my um Avon Mind Sensor can lock that down quite a bit in response to him trying to activate it. If he can't deal with my voice of all here, then his Rurik has to attack into it, which is really good. And the reason I chose to give it pro red, it's because it's the only color that he has that we don't share and I want it to be able to um to equip well the green and white card onto it interesting Quicksilver Amulet, 4 mana untapped. Sure. So you take 6. Ooh, 
Nice. That actually works out pretty good for us because uh, she's pro red. So we'll block because why not? Gain some life out of it basically. So he doesn't need to actually hard cast any creatures for the rest of the game. And we can't swing in because uh, he's going to get us on the swing back. Hmm. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature fights target creature in opponent's control. Yeah. So we're not going to be doing that right now. We need to get rid of our Quicksilver Amulet. It just makes him able to fight at instant speed. So take six and you don't get that card because that card is busted right now. because we just we just straight up do and chump block here and then this is what we wanted here is he's swinging again we block this way this time because we already did two damage to this and Rorik's damage will take I'm gonna use this opportunity to put another creature out he's down to two cards in hand now I know one of what one of them is which is just a giant so I'm not too worried about that part one two three Four, and then we'll just swing with this trigger a feek always yield always yield his creature has reached but I have protection from red so he still can't block it so we just gained a bunch of life from that um I think we can afford to put Loxit on Hammer down, but we're just going to... I think we should take it easy here and just pass it to him. We don't have any counters in hand because we don't run that many counters in this deck, but we want to at least give the um, illusion that we do have something. If Rafiq dies here, we're also not... Um, we don't mind if he dies here. This card is one of the main things we wanted to get rid of. Because with this out, I probably wouldn't have played Rafiq. It would be so easy for him to kill Rafiq that way. But because he attacked into my strategy, it made it easier to play around that card. 
So that one turn from Rafik netted me 10 life. Like I said, we're completely okay with this guy coming out. So he has one card in hand. If he puts that out, then all his cards are on the table and uh, we know exactly what we're dealing with. Um. Yeah, I don't think this is going to come to his next turn, to be honest. I'll just I'll block here. Because I really don't think this is going to come to an, another turn. He has no mana untapped. I'm going to put Lockfit and Warhammer out. I'll take six, no problem. It's not, it's not that big of a deal here. Equip. And then I'll swing. Again, pro red. And that's the game. Thanks for watching, guys.